Angels Care Home Health, serving Hayes and the surrounding areas, is a Medicare-certified home health agency providing quality skilled nursing and restorative therapy services to patients in their homes. I would recommend Angel Care to anybody. They have really helped me regain my strength. Angels Care is there to help 24 hours a day, and all services are covered 100% by Medicare for patients who are eligible. Angels Care Home Health. We serve patients. I couldn't have survived this without Angels Care. Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. Thanks for watching and thanks to our producer, Jeff Durall. We're at the auditorium at Fort Kansas State University, the Agricultural Research Center, and we're visiting with the KSU watershed specialist, Stacy Minson and friend here, uh, the Rollout the Rain Barrel project that's taking place uh, and uh, is underway now, as a matter of fact. Stacy, let's begin, uh, if you would, to outline a little bit of the National Water Conservation Project and how this started. Um, this basically was just an idea that Dr. Gene Gleshner at Fort Hayes had and myself on trying to engage the urban population on water quality issues. There's a lot of money tied to agriculture on national water quality initiatives that they get money to put grass waterways, terraces, convert to no-till on the ground because they cover so many acres. But there really isn't an, an active effort to look at homeowners and what their pollution efforts are that go downstream. And so this was an idea if we could get them to conserve water, then we also keep water on their property. And so it's a dual purpose. And obviously in 2009, we weren't quite as dry as we are now. Um, we came up with this idea in the spring of 2009. We had a pilot project out at the Hayes Rec Center, and uh, we had no idea what to expect, honestly. Um, our goal was 100 barrels. We actually had a Coke truck bringing us barrels that day because we'd sold out of what we had pre-registered. Pre and I can't remember how many did that we did that day. It was close to 200. So we figured out that the pilot project must be a success. So it's kind of snowballed from there. And we're, you know, 2015, starting our sixth year with it. So you called him our friend. Um, some days I'm not sure if it is a friend. I think some days it's been a nightmare with the number of barrels that we've had success with this project. So um, mm -hmm. our goal was to reach the urban population, get them to understand water quality and how they affect it. It's, it's definitely working. And then with all the water conservation efforts in Hayes, it's working on that side as well. So You've gotten some real good support. We're going to talk <laughs> about some of the support you've gotten. But uh, as the local project has progressed then, getting bigger every year, the uh, local distribution uh, took place last week then uh, in Hayes. Um, uh, how many pre-registration on that one? Um, about 255 and calls were still coming in that day. <laughs> so um, it was a little crazy, but we have, um, we've kind of got a system set up out at the experiment station and it just looks like a, an assembly line with cars backed up back out to the highway, literally for people picking up barrels. So it works great. Um, and the support for the experiment station, Ellis County Extension Office, and the Conservation District has been really great, along with all of our Fort Hayes State um, students and professors that partner with this. And uh, you're going to Ellis then this week, right? Yes, Wednesday we'll be in Ellis um, as a project with the city, city council. Obviously, they have out, no outdoor watering restrictions. And so we've done a couple events there over the years. and. Um, we actually had a good problem happen. We had too many barrels shipped and I ran out of storage space in Hayes. So I called the city of Ellis and said, do you want some? And they said, sure. So we're gonna build in Ellis um, on Wednesday. And so they'll be available for pickup after, after lunch that day on Wednesday, the 15th. And uh, you mentioned some of the people that are involved in this, uh, some of whom are from Fort Hayes State University. Yes, Dr. Jean Gleshner's home horticulture class um, in the ag department is, is the main class that's involved with it. Over the years, there's been other students that have come out and helped through Dr. Bob Stevenson in the ag department as well. The other group that's really involved with it is the Ellis County Master Gardeners, mm. which are through the Ellis County Extension Office. Um, and then just people that have maybe bought barrels over the years that want to come back and help ran a registration table 
or they just want to be involved. They might be making sure food gets out here to the volunteers. Um, if you haven't been out here the day it happens, um, we start at 1 o'clock and we go until 6 or 7 until all the barrels are picked up. Um, so it's a great, great event. Coca-Cola um, is where we get the barrels. They come out of Lenexa into the Victoria plant, and then we go to Victoria and pick the barrels up and store them and bring them over and build them. Uh, all right, let's take a look at the actual particulars <clears throat> of uh, this uh, rain barrel. First of all, it's 55 gallon, right? Yes, 55 gallon plastic barrel, and they had pop syrup in them. So because they had pop syrup with FDA rules, they can't be used again, they have to be recycled. So it's a perfect fit for us versus them recycling them and uh, chopping them up into plastic for parks or playground equipment. We have a much better use for it. So. All right, so we have the barrel itself uh, now, uh, obviously at the bottom. Uh, let's start at the bottom and work our way to the top, okay? okay? This is just a valve, it has a shut off and you can tell it's new, it hasn't been used much. Mm -hmm. It's got a reverse threaded bung here, two fittings. The advantage of these is they're, water, they're winter proof. As long mm -hmm. as you keep that valve open, you don't have to take them down for the winter. Obviously, you need to make sure that they're weighted down somehow so the Kansas winds don't take it for a ride. That's happened a few times for a few of our people. <laughs> um, but it works really well. Over the years, we've redesigned our parts and changed some things and this is a plastic fitting with a brass valve so it does not wear out mm -hmm. um, and it works really great. And the brass valve then you'd put a garden hose or other attachment yep. on that? Garden hose, soaker hose, mm -hmm. however you want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, some people just keep it closed, you put a bucket under it, take buckets and water their plants mm -hmm. with it that way too. All right, there's a little opening on the side here, Stacy. Yes, this is the overflow. So when we get the storm events coming off of the roofs, the barrel is full, instead of it overflowing the top and flooding your basement, there's an overflow here. There's adapters that you can get, PVC adapters, that you can either hook a garden hose up, take it out. You can take inch and a half PVC pipe, make an elbow and take it down. Hook another piece of garden hose up, which you could have a soaker hose taking it out across um, a garden or across some um, shrubs or anything like that. So you're utilizing that water versus it staying at your foundation. And it works really well um, when it comes to that. That was our, it's close enough to the top so you get almost 55 gallons of full water storage. And then on the top, and you can, we'll tilt this down a little bit, uh, you can show us there's a larger hole opening there. Yeah, this is just a PVC reducer with screen and a clamp on it. Your gutter just sits right here on the top so that we prevent all of the dirt and debris from coming into the gut or into the barrel and then it, you can just keep that off of it and it's easy to take off. One of the things that I get calls on is there's lots of algae growing in it. That's just the nature of it. The best advantage with these is you can use Clorox, mm -hmm. a cup of Clorox, put that in and let it sit for two or three days before you use the water. Mm -hmm. And it volatizes the Clorox out mm -hmm. and then it helps control the algae. The algae doesn't hurt anything, but some people just don't like the color of the algae mm -hmm. um, in the barrel. Uh, once again, too, uh, the barrel is closed, so there's no point for, or no chance for mosquitoes to get in for breeding purposes there. Yeah, and we've had a few people mm -hmm. that have had mosquitoes or they were concerned with it. Um, we told them to just go get some inexpensive goldfish. Mm -hmm. They'll float around. They take care of the mosquitoes. Obviously, if you're going to use Clorox to get rid of the algae, you're going to have to buy new goldfish. <laughs> but um, it works relatively easy, um, and they're pretty maintenance-free. They really mm -hmm. are. Now, for the uh, uh, pre-registration that took place, uh, the costs of the barrels are $26, yes. right? Yes, and that includes everything. They're ready to go when you get here. Um, you can tell us if you want this side overflow, this side, depending upon what corner of your house or your shed that you're going to put it on. Some of our um, individuals want to connect two or three together. So if you get here early enough and you tell us, then we can drill holes and have one barrel overflow into the next barrel. Uh -huh. And there's some pretty um, elite systems out there that homeowners have figured out. We have one um, homeowner in town. It's actually um, Eber Phelps, one of our... Um, City commissioners, he's got four or five barrels that overflow across into each other. 
that he's got a couple one year, and then the next year he and Joni decided they needed a couple more, and so he's just figured out how to overflow. So I think he's got five, so he's got over 250 gallons of storage right there on every rain event. And when we do get rain, it doesn't take very much to fill these up. Even if we have a, a morning where we have a lot of heavy dew coming off of a roof, you'll be surprised how much that dew will fill up one of these barrels. The uh, uh, money is used for what? The money is used obviously to pay for the parts mm -hmm. and sometimes we have to pay transportation. A couple years ago Coca-Cola changed how they process all their pop mm -hmm. and instead of using 55 gallon barrels they went to the big um, 300 gallon shuttles in the metal cages. Oh. And so because of that, they told us we weren't going to have as many barrels. Well, um, nobody else must want the barrels because we're still getting them, and we're very thankful for that. But that year, we paid for transportation to bring every barrel. We paid for a semi, which was 260 barrels. So we had every barrel that was left in the plant mm -hmm. just to make sure we had a stockpile. And obviously, those didn't last very long. But pays for all the parts for our label, which shows all of our partners, which includes the conservation district. Um, K-State Research and Extension, obviously, mm -hmm. Fort Hay State, the city of Hayes, and then Coca-Cola. So um, part of it is, is just getting people to be aware. Mm -hmm. And I think that this has been a great way to just get the connection that what leaves your property does affect somebody else. That's uh, one of the things that we wanted to talk about in addition to initial benefits of being able to water the trees or the garden or such as that. Uh, you do get some benefits for helping the downstream water flow. Yes, here in Hayes and in Ellis, when something leaves your driveway or your lawn, especially after you've fertilized or anything like that, that water travels down the streets into the storm drains. And in Hayes, it goes into Shotola Creek or Lincoln Draw and ends up down here south mm -hmm. in Big Creek, which travels downstream. Ultimately, for my watershed, ends up in Canopolis Reservoir, which is a federal drinking water supply. But the thing to remember is, whatever those pollutants are, whether it's pet waste that we haven't picked up after our animals, which have a bacteria source, mm -hmm. we fertilize the lawn, nitrogen, phosphorus, um, sediment, so say maybe you have a bare spot in your lawn and you've reworked it and you've planted grass or you hope to plant grass maybe or you just have a, a landscape bed that you're converting to um, minimum amount of water that bare soil travels downstream maybe you've changed the oil and you had an oil spill all of those things affect our water supply we don't necessarily see it or know it but it travels downstream and it affects somebody else's water supply. So if we can keep that water from coming off of our roof, leaving our properties going downstream, we can keep that water on there and we keep the pollutants on our footprint of our property. Stacy, we have a couple of minutes left. Uh, tell us about any current watershed projects that are um, underway. We have a couple, of course, we are partnering with the city of Hayes to do many different information and education programs. One thing that's happening right now and the deadline is April 17th, I believe, um, we're doing a water quality poster contest. It's open to preschool through college. Mm -hmm. And the paper's available at City Hall. The schools have the paper. It's just a 11 by um, 18 size piece of paper. The theme is water quality and you have to draw a poster tied to water quality. Mm -hmm. Each grade that each, you know, kindergarten, first, second, all the way up, the first place gets a $50 chamber bucks. $30 for the second place, $20 for the third, and then the winning student in each grade gets a pizza party for their class. <laughs> so um, we hope to, to spread the message as kids are doing the posters, they're sharing it with their parents and vice versa. Um, we'll see that's something that, that's new that Stephen Walters and I, he's the city of Hay Storm Water Superintendent, came up with mm -hmm. to just get some information out there. Then on the ag side, we are in our fourth year for the National Water Quality Initiative through EPA and, and National Resource Conservation Service. Mm -hmm. The town of Munger watershed just southwest here of Hayes has had over $1.5 million allocated to our landowners to put terraces, waterways, mm -hmm. livestock waste management. So we just had our fourth year of sign up. That's a national initiative. They picked three watersheds in the state of Kansas and we happen to be one of the three. Wow. So our producers have not had to compete for money, mm -hmm. that money, if they've had a resource concern to protect water quality in the environment, as long as they've had that resource concern and met NRCS's guidelines, they've been 
um, eligible to have that money to improve their land, which ultimately Big Creek goes through the town of Munger watershed downstream, which helps everybody. It's an amazing project that you're involved with, not only the rain barrel project for uh, the urban areas, but also uh, the larger watershed projects. I want you to keep us informed on those events, and uh, it's amazing the, the amount of information that you've been able to uh, put forth on the years of service that you've done. We really appreciate your Thank efforts, you, Stacy. Stacy Minson, Kansas State University Watershed Specialist from the K-State Ag Research Center our community connection. Thanks for watching. Angels Care Home Health, serving Hayes and the surrounding areas is a Medicare certified home health agency providing quality skilled nursing and restorative therapy services to patients in their homes. There's not any words to describe their kindness. Angels Care is there to help 24 hours a day, and all services are covered 100% by Medicare for patients who are eligible. Angels Care Home Health. We serve patients. They saved my life.